The views and opinions expressed in this podcast episode are those of the host and guests and not their sponsoring institutions. Welcome back to the Chris Cross Corner Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Canty, and we have Basil Lowe from The Great Debaters here. What's up, Basil? But not much. I love the hesitation. Like it was like, and (laughs) And I wanted to say a better intro. Like, "Eh, should I say it? Nah, we'll get into that conversation later. But uh, welcome back. So shout out to all the Crisscross Corner Podcast Facebook group members, all 770 of you guys. Keep on joining the conversation. We're going to talk about some topics that we uh, put in the group today. We're going to talk about that. Uh, But before we do that, we're going to talk about a lot of things that happened today and last weekend, as well as my top 10 list of the week. So please listen to the entire podcast today. First, we're going to start off with what you doing, Detroit? What you doing? All right. So we know that there's a Hollywood casino down in Toledo, right? Well, there's going to be a river. Yep, there's gonna be a there's gonna be one in Detroit. Yes, I said it. Greek Town Casino is going to be renamed Hollywood Casino at Greek Town, effective May first, twenty twenty two. So does that mean you guys are gonna lose your buffet then, or how's that gonna work? <laughs> you're just you're just worried about the buffet. Look, when you go to a casino, okay. When you when you like crap out on all your winnings and all that, and you're like, all you can do left after that is go to the you know go to the buffet or go to the bar, and eat or drink your sorrows and stuff like that. D- Good luck. <laughs> well, it's it's gonna be different. I can see it being different, but it's still Greek town to me. I'm a I'm a native Detroiter, so Greek town is always worth. Hopefully at. the. Uh... Hopefully, like, the two-in-the-morning blackjack tables are still cheap. True. We should go play blackjack one time. Just all of us go play blackjack and see who wins the most money. Or loses the most money, in my case. But uh, I don't do... I do the most minimal, like, impact. (laughs) Drop 100. Ah, Here we go. Hit me. (laughs) No, I mean, like, I'll just do minimum hand all the time. Like, What's what's the memo to get in? Okay, that's what I'm putting down. Mm, okay, that's cool. Well, speaking of the minimum to put there, down, I'm just there for the show. Speaking of minimum to put down, um, Marvin Winans did not miss a step. Okay, his girlfriend of 15 years, uh, Deneen Carter, they all got married over the weekend. Shout out to the Winans family. Uh, here's to years of happiness to come, even though you don't have that much. Uh, Next, we have General Motors confirms that it will offer an all-electric Corvette. Not only that, but it's, are these, are the rumors still true where it's going to be kind of crossover-esque, sort of? I said all-electric, so I don't know. Because, like, might from be. what I saw of the photos, it looked like it was going to be, like, that Mustang Mach-E. hmm And... mach I, nice. I've told people this. I've told people this ever since the four-door Wrangler. You know, it's like, you, you just did something where you opened a can of worms. <laughs> did they, though? They They did. Because they're like, oh, it seems like Jeep's making good money, you know, doing something sacrilegious. sacrilegious? We can too. Yeah. Oh, it is. As a Toledoan, it is sacrilegious. What what they do that was sacrilegious? They they made the four door Wranglers. Oh gosh, stop it! If you want, if you want a four door Jeep, you get a Cherokee or a Grand Cherokee. That was that was the rules. That's what it was back then. But before they, the Cherokee, but they, you got but they, made the extra, they made the extra seat in the Wranglers. Y'all got mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I certainly did. It's like Soc- the Soccer same Moms real wanted, Wrangler. 
Soccer moms wanted to be cool. You couldn't have Hummer take all the heat before they close down. <laughs> but hey, my next car might be a grand blasphemy. Cherokee. Mm -mm -mm. Speaking of blasphemy, that's what I'm saying. Um, it's cinnamon milk glaze. Did you hear about try this? That. Did you hear about this at Krispy Kreme Donuts? They I, have a, I a, did a cinnamon milk glaze collection. They have like different okay. donuts. I went in on it. I'm about to go tomorrow morning and try this. And it better be good. If it's not, I want gas money from Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. I want gas money. I'm just saying. And we got up the street from my house. I just gave out where I live. In Southfield, 10 Mile and Telegraph, there was going to be a Chick fil A. We said it earlier in the year. Chick fil A is going to be at the corner of, well, it's not really the corner. It's between 696 and Telegraph, you know, 696 and 12 Mile off Telegraph in front of the Best Buy, Pet Smart, and all that stuff over there. So, good luck. Honestly, when it comes to Michigan Labs, so you might as well just say the corner. True. Because by the time you have to pass that anyway, then you have to do that weird, you know, you have to do the U turn. For those that don't know how what a Michigan left is, if you want to make a left, you're supposed to go straight until you're allowed to make a U turn, and that's your left. Mm -hmm. And you could thank Detroit Metro all for that one. So if you see something like that in your area that makes no sense, thank Detroit. Well, you're welcome. I wouldn't say the corner because it's right off it's right off the ramp of 696 and Telegraph. So you don't really need to make a Michigan left to get there because it's right there. So it's not going to be near that one Michigan left to do the U-turn? No, you know where the – um, let me see. There's like a Chrysler dealership right there, Chrysler dealership. And then before you get to like 12 Mile, there's like these other lights right before. That's where it's going to be. Yeah. It's on the Michigan left to go towards – 12 mile west or east. So if you're coming well, down saying, south, though. no, if you're coming down south from, from from 12 mile, you go on the Michigan left, but it's a straight shot, not a Michigan left. You're just turning into the parking lot. Yeah. That's that's why I said it's on the corner. It's not on the corner. It's on Long Telegraph. Of the Michigan left. It's on the I'm from Michigan. We don't say on the corner. We don't say on the corner if it's like that. We just say it's on, a long, it's a long telegraph. If it's on the corner, it's on the corner. Yeah, but you're kind of forgetting that not many people realize how long telegraph is. Oh, true. Te oh, it's on, it's I live telegraph, on telegraph. It's on, it's on telegraph in 696. On the east side of telegraph. In the uh, strip mall, shopping mall, the Meyer shopping mall, over there. The complex. Yeah, over there. So that's what's gonna be. Told y'all was gonna happen. No one believed me, and it's it's being built right now. So it's gonna cause a lot of traffic. I just know I just know that much. But uh, um, Coach Harbaugh. The telegraph is down. Uh... Coach Harbaugh sells his Bay Area mansion. For $12 million. Yes, this man is rich. It was his house when he was the um, coach for the... Uh, the coach of the 49ers? 49ers, yeah. Wait, you're telling me he still had that that whole time? Even mm -hmm. while still in... Mm -hmm. So does that mean he's doubling down in Ann Arbor now? Or... He probably doesn't live in Ann Arbor. He probably lives in like Barton Hills or some other big secluded area no actually no wait what, what's that part of ann arbor where it's like like, super like to the north empty? yeah that's that's barton hills over there it's like north of like yeah. 14 yeah i don't think he lives there either i don't know where he lives he might live in like chelsea <laughs> away from all the madness but uh yeah i think he could be living in like saline and crab like that mm -hmm. he might be no, you know what? And I'm I, I say this not just because I I dislike the guy for being a 
Michigan coach, but I could see him being the type to live in Nova. <laughs> like the Nova and Northfield area, those big homes. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Too. Well, what's up, Coach? Uh, coach Patricia went for the Lions, lived out in Northfield. Okay, that he seems like a downriver guy more than he does. anything. He does. Like, like a, he looks like a good wine dot, <laughs> a good Riverview guy. Shout out to our listeners in uh, Riverview and wine dot if you're listening. <sighs> yeah, he does. I would say we like your trade center, but yeah, it's it's not there. Anymore. Yeah, which which that's in that's in Taylor anyway, but. Um, it's still part of Down River. Oh, true, but it's not winding out of Riverview. Uh, yeah, so Coach Harbaugh has 12 more million dollars in his bank account, unlike somebody who has 44 billion dollars in his bank account now. Mr. Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, your tweets are now owned by the richest man in the world. <sighs> we used to get upset with it being Jeff Bezos, and now it's just another guy that we're just like, F this man. Right. I, I'm not saying F him. I mean, he's he's a, he was, he was a low-key guy. Jeff Bezos was kind of low-key, but he was just an asshole. Elon yeah. Musk is like a, hey, I'm here. I'm buying all this stuff. Don't really care. But I still have a conscience. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here's the here's the problem that I have with Elon Musk. One, with some of the stuff that you listen, like you hear him talk about and all that, like as far as like empathy or whatever, mm-hmm. he almost don't seem human. Does and then you look at you look at the name of his child. <laughs> you cannot tell me the man is a cyborg. What do you name his child? I'm trying to remember. God, I gotta look up the actual. There. There was letters, there was numbers involved, there were there there was a hyphen in it. I kid you hold on, I gotta look this up. This is pissing me off. We just triggered basil guys. Okay. He's got eight children. What the what the heck are all their names? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what I would do. Okay, okay, here we go. The the latest child, okay? Okay. Um is X. And then you have you know how like in old English you combine the A and the E together? Mm-hmm. The eighth sound? That's X eighth A dash twelve. But uh because of that, California regulations made him to where they he had to drop the twelve. So it's X I I. So A B X I I. So it's yeah. So, so A B twelve. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, no, we just call him X. Like, you can't really name him a number because you know we have lots of numbers in the state penitentiary right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, congratulations to Elon Musk. Should I really be saying congratulations? Because you just, you just, you just bought like forty-four billion dollars worth of problems. <laughs> of like, because Mark Zuckerberg is always in Washington for a for a court ki- court hearing, or Microsoft's always <laughs> in Washington for a court hearing. So, can't wait to see Elon Musk on uh, C-SPAN next week. So, um, Grand Rapids Police. We're going to talk about this on another episode farther down the line because of all the stuff that's been happening. But uh, Patrick LaLoya, LaYoya, was wrongfully shot in Grand Rapids. So we are praying for the family, the LaYoya family, and hope that the police officer that did shoot him goes away for a long time. Uh, Kay Cunningham did not get rookie of the year. Yes, Pistons fans. Shock. Yes, Pistons fans. It is now officially Detroit versus everybody. The Detroit Pistons selected Kay Cunningham, number one. Number one pick. 
literally saved the team on most games. Dropped triple doubles, quadruple doubles sometimes. And yet he still doesn't get a rookie of the year. Some idiot from Memphis got it. Like, who, who is this guy? But Kay Cunningham gets rookie of the year. <sighs> we just can't win it in Detroit. We just can't win. It's horrible. This is Detroit. I know. It's just, it's a conspiracy against Detroit. And it's it's, 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 it's a con- you, you know what? This, this is what you get for outsourcing your uh automotive factories. Hey, we, hey, that wasn't Detroit. That was that was literally the co- co- corporate business minds that were in Detroit. That wasn't us. Yeah, well, we they just live here. Yeah, but problem is, it was just like um, just like in holes. You know, Stanley Yilnads didn't do his uh, what he was supposed to do, so he gets cursed and all that. Yeah. He had Ford and GM. They just like they they cursed Detroit. They did. Then got bailed out, but it's okay. Um, the Bulls are in the playoffs. Can we talk about that? Who? The Bulls. The Bulls are in the, We're not going to talk about the Bulls right now because this is a Detroit podcast, okay? We're going to talk yeah, about the but Bulls remember how when you the guys, Bulls lose. But remember when all the Pistons fans told the one Bulls fan, like, you guys are going to do good, and the Bulls fan said, no, it looks like we're going to be good, but I don't think we're going to be good. And oh, then, we told you y'all were going to do good this year. And look where you are. And I and I didn't believe it. I was like, okay, you were right. You're in the playoffs, but you're down three three games to one in the series, and you might go home on Wednesday. Just uh, well, at least we're not the um, third worst team in the entire league. So who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at look at the bright side. At least he ain't Houston. That's true. We're not Houston. Thank God. Um, speaking of uh, down south in Florida, um, Houston's nowhere near Florida. But anyway, we're going to talk about what the audience was talking about this week. We had uh, an orange juice debate. And a lot of people on my Instagram, on the Instagram account, said no pulp when it comes to orange juice. Because it's not a debate. No, there is why a debate. Do you wanna... a, a lot of people like pulp in their orange juice. Why Why would someone want to chew their juice? You don't have to chew your juice. It depends on how much pulp is in it first. Like, if it's freshly squeezed, I can understand if there's pulp in it. But, which I do like. I love freshly squeezed orange juice, and I like the pulp that's in it. But if it comes out of like a like a bottle, like a Tropicana or Minute Maid or like that, like one of those cartons, it better not have pulp in it because I don't trust it. The only place I will ever trust freshly squeezed oranges, though, mm-hmm. is when you actually go down in Florida and some parts of it, because what's nice is they are oranges. They're straight off the fields, mm-hmm. so you don't have to worry about all the crap that they spray on them when they get ready to like throw send them on them the truck to uh, send them across the country and all that. Yeah. There, there's orange trees in Michigan. <laughs> there's no orange trees in Michigan. Anyway, I like to believe that, but it, it there's not. Um so oh, I'm a no I'm a no pulp guy. I'm a no pulp guy. I'm a no pulp also. Yeah but that's that's something you see let me let's go to the to the fan and see which Let's go on Facebook because I didn't get a lot of things on Facebook. There was one person on the Facebook one that said that not only do they want pulp, they want extra pulp. Let me see. It's like, for uh, God's sakes, just cut an orange and just, you know, take a bite out of that if you want extra pulp. Yeah. Jasmine Black. Sweet. How are you doing, Jasmine Black? You like extra pulp. Well, we don't. Thank you for your <laughs> comments. I you like just like the oranges. <laughs> Leslie F. Thomas likes pulp. Uh, yuck. Mm. Everybody else, you guys are friends with mine because you guys don't like no pulp. Adrian Chestnut, wife of uh, fellow great debater Eric Chestnut, uh, says homemade first and then no pulp. Which I kind of have to wonder, how does that work for homemade? Uh, you, you use a strainer. See, that's what, okay, that's what I figured. 
It's just not like it's not like you're squeezing it and the pulp goes into the juice. You have like a strainer type, and it goes in, which is delicious. Um, let's see. I just know like if if it's done correctly or done the right way, you can have freshly squeezed, uh, freshly squeezed with. It'll have pulp, but it'll be very, very minimum. Like low pulp? And like that's, yeah. And that's like, that's the, that's what I'm used to having down in Florida. I'll put up with that. Mm-hmm. But you start adding, you start adding extra, like five, like five oranges worth of pulp in one glass. Five oranges? That's a lot of oranges. It's like here's here's the equivalent of one orange, but we gave it the pulp of five. It's like you mother, right? <laughs> and what the heck? Uh, we just got word of uh, breaking news that the Brooklyn Nets have been swept four zero against the Boston Celtics. I'm a fellow Detroit sports fan, so in the word in the words of all Detroit sports fans, when it comes to Boston, fuck Boston. Now, I'm in Boston, because it's fuck Boston. We hate Boston. Celtics, the Boston. New England Patriots, the Boston Red Sox, the Bruins, the New England Revolution. We hate them. We hate them all. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, hold on. Bruce Arenas, I'm talking to you. <laughs> we have another. We have another episode coming later this uh, later next month about a topic about music. Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Sending your votes for who you want to have in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this year. Uh, I think the voting ends in a few months, so please give in your votes. Uh, Duran Duran, I think, is the number one, I guess. And then number two, a close number two is Eminem. However, hmm. the person who likes to write stories in Cleveland from Cleveland.com, Mr. Troy L. Smith, he wrote an article saying why Eminem should be in and why he shouldn't. Now we're gonna dive into why he said they shouldn't in an interview with, well, okay, we don't have him for an interview, but we're just gonna talk about it with the other great debaters and see why Eminem, why he thinks Eminem shouldn't be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Sure, if I even ever want to meet this guy. Oh, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> you don't want to meet Troy L. Smith. No. I was willing to maybe go like, okay, Troy, explain yourself. After when he broke down his list of all the other ones. Uh -huh. But after saying like, no, I'm and I'm, it's like, okay. <laughs> Stay exactly. out of my house. Exactly. Okay, Jackson 5 and Earth, Wind and Fire and the Isaac Brothers not going into the Hall of Fame. That, that triggered a lot of people. But Eminem? The only rapper to get an Oscar? When he had it, when when he got it, come on now. The first rapper to get an Oscar. Come on now. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. You would wonder, because I need to look up this guy, like see what his why he hates music in general. <laughs> no, just like look up his actual credibility. Like, watch it be like he just has a degree in like just a bachelor's in communications and he listens to like backstreet boys or something like that and like hey, good Damn, okay, so, okay no no don't bash the backstreet boys i'm not bad no, well what i'm saying is he's like oh i know music i listen to boy bands like i listen to in sync <laughs> yeah. i listen to 98 yeah. degrees <laughs> i listen to uh bb mac wait 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 b5 remember b5 <laughs> bad boy yeah. records oh no 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 <laughs> Here's a, he's, a, he's another one that's real obscure for uh, people that will be like late 90s, early 2000s, be like, oh, yeah. O-Town. Not O-Town. All right, we're done with this episode. You brought up O-Town. <laughs> for the girls, we'll bring in um, wait, 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 wait. Hanson, Bewitched. Hanson. Bewitched. Hanson. Remember Hanson? God, I'm still no. making music. Boom, bop. Stop. I didn't put that in the list last week for 90s music. I put Hanson in there. I'm you know what? I'm glad you did. That was a good song. Come on now. No, good. it's no, it's not. Guess it was. Stop it. 
No, because it's. I'm right going to do a revised with, episode. Um, I'm going to do a, a revised episode of the 90s. Music. Just to make me mad. Just to make you. Number one, <laughs> Oombop by Hanson. I'm still upset. I'm still can't believe the fact that you didn't put Ellen John's uh, 97 version of Candle in the Wind. Mm-mm. Not going on the list. Not going on the list. I'm sorry. I listened to it. Me and my mom listened to that on the way back home from Iowa. And I was like, I'm so glad I didn't put this in the list. <laughs> You're telling me that song did not song. get you teared up or nothing. Nope. <sighs> It was a good song, but it wasn't top 100. In my no, opinion. instead you had, uh, what was it, Last Year? No, Can You Feel the Love Tonight from The Lion King. No, no, no. I'm talking about um, the song from Eric Clapton. Oh, yeah, Tis in Heaven. That was like number 99. Yeah, you Tis had that. But <laughs> it's a good song. If I'm going to do some sort of 90s death song, I'd rather do... No, actually, I'd rather do Runaway Train. Mm-hmm. Wait, is that the one I'm thinking of? I don't know. Like... I'll be missing you on there. I'll be missing you is a good song. Puff Daddy and them. Before Biggie's death. It is a death song. I mm-hmm. kind of forgot about that. Mm-hmm. That's an emotional. No, song. what are we talking about? Bi- what are we talking about? Tupac and Biggie, they're still alive. No, the okay, <laughs> on the, for the purposes of this podcast, they're not alive. However, I agree <laughs> that there's someone out there just chilling. Shoot, especially after uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? Ghetto Gospel. Mm-hmm. Tupac's mom was like basically like hinting as if he was still out there somewhere. It's like. <laughs> He's still out okay. there. Okay. He's still out there, y'all. No, no, he's not. Anyway, um, like topic of the day that people wanted me to talk about. All right. So I saw on Facebook there was this guy. I mean, there was this lady who wanted to be taken out on a date. This guy takes her out, wants to take her out on a date, but he says that her child can't come. And then she thinks that he's wrong for saying that her daughter or her son, we don't know what the sex of the baby is, uh, that her child can't come. Is this wrong or not? Was it a first date? Yes, it was. Then no. <laughs> See? If it's a first date, even if it's like a, like, if it's, it's a date, it's a date. Y'all don't care if it's a first date or not. Like, if it's a date between you and her, then it should be just between you and her, in my opinion. It's, if you want to say like, hey, I'm going to even... take you and your child out tonight, that's different. It's not even so much of just that, but it's especially for the first few dates. The the whole point of it is that when you're a single parent, is you're supposed to gauge not just whether or not the person you're going out with at the moment is a good fit for you, but also can you trust them with your child and they are they a good fit with them? Mm-hmm. And if you're already bringing the child right off the bat, like you're you could be asking for trouble. Mm-hmm. That's that's your fault. <laughs> that's right. your fault as a single parent. That's a you should have known on, better. That's a red flag on her side. Like, hey, why are you bringing this kid? Like, first of all, why are you bringing the kid to a date for, for, to a complete stranger? That's one. Either it's a blind date, first date. If you met like you know, you know each other for years, and it's your first date. Oh my gosh! If it like, was a that's blind weird. date, then it's then it's more weird for the guy. <laughs> He's like, okay, we have a, we have a kid. Uh, yeah. Um, welcome, well, welcome to Twin Peaks. May I take your order? <laughs> but, okay, I love how you went. You went with that. I was thinking like somewhere, kind of like on the level of like capers or something, where it's like you're getting like, uh, at like at like nine o'clock at night, <laughs> that kind of crowd. Yeah, nine o'clock at night. Yeah. You have like wine on the table and stuff like that. It's like <laughs> Wait, there's wine you can't capers? drink. Wait, there's wine at capers? Oh, boy. <laughs> no, no, not cap- no, I'm sorry, not capers. There's what's the other what's the other one? Um Ruth. Oh, uh Ruth Chris. Ruth Chris Dickhouse. Yeah. 
which is very good. Shout out to Ruth Chris in Ann Arbor and Troy. I'm a, I'm a loyal customer every every six years um because it's too expensive but it's okay but i would i want to take i want to take my daughter we're going to ruth chris once i get some money <laughs> not together we're going to go like with like a, a group of people <laughs> it'll be kind of weird oh man but yeah here, here with my boy basil <laughs> yeah, ruth here's chris. um my you know who she oh. wants to take me her and her daughter to this steakhouse that just opened in Toledo. What's now, the name mind of you, what's the like, name of it? Um, Chop House, I think it's called. Chop House. It's right by the Heights. It's it's on the edge of downtown. It's by the uh, Renaissance Hotel. Um, oh, Chop House. Yeah, we have but, we have a few here. But yours is new. I think it's called Chop House. Yeah, the Chop House. Yeah, it looks it looks nice. No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, the Brim House. The Brim House? The Brim House. Hmm. Now, no, no, I'm sorry. No, it was the Chop House that she wanted to uh, wanted to have all three of us go to the Chop House. And I'm like, you do realize like yes. how much we both make and what this would cost. And you don't see the okay. If there's no prices next to it, you know it's gonna be expensive. Exactly. And it says price. But here's steak, the thing not though, regular I, I, I know. Not regular I steak. know like yeah, I know that the cheap like the cheapest steaks start at like because, 60. Yeah, uh, I guess I mean some of them might start at 45. That's still too much. But it, yeah, it's it's 22 ounces, so it'd probably be about 50, 60. Especially for bringing a five-year-old. 36 porterhouse. For two, that's a good 70, maybe 80. Beef Wellington, they have, oh, they got ribeye. Oh, tenderloin, filet mignon. See, I'd be going with the cowboy steak. I I was at, at, it was my birthday dinner. I mean, uh, Alyssa took me to the steakhouse at MGM. Uh, There was this couple next to us, and the guy said, no, the, the lady, the guy was like, hey, you can get you some steaks. And the lady was like, let me get some filet magnion. I was like, all right, y'all. All right, y'all. Before you come, before you walk into the steakhouse, okay, you got to know what these things are pronounced. Wait, wait, you tell me she wanted some uh, Russian fighter jets or something? She, she wanted said, some MiGs? Magnion. I was like, okay. I'm about to go over there and say, all right, baby. Here's how you pronounce the words in the menu. Dry aged New York okay, strip. Yeah. You know that's gonna be expensive. Poultry. Actually, and I take chops. that back. I'd be going with the I'd be going with the the lamb chops. I'm I'm, I'm just saying, I'm looking at it. these are Australian lamb chops, which means they had to be shipped. Yeah, I know. From Australia. And they're, they're- and and then they're and they're the ribs, so you don't even get like a real big thing. It's like you get like, like long the thing. rib, and then what's ever at the little end. <laughs> so you're not even getting like a whole like you just got like this little. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a meatball sucker. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, it's, it's like a lamb idea. sucker. That's a good idea. Like, it is just a sucker. Like how many licks does it take to get to a to the bottom of, a, of an Australian lamb uh, a lamb rib chop? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> just rip it off. Throw the bone away. It could make for interesting, um, intimate like, a, like attraction moments. Because you know how, like, sometimes you'll see girls like when they're trying to be, like, Wait, when what? they're trying to be sexy, you know, they'll have a sucker and they'll try to be like, oh, you know, going like this. It's like not with the lamp a girl. Not with the yeah, lamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you're like messed up, you're messing like, up my fantasy like, with just, these lamp shots. <laughs> you should be like, I should be disgusted. But I'm just I'm more disgusted in myself for enjoying this. We we, we are live, Basil. We're we're live. <laughs> <laughs> Australian rib, what is this? Mazaluna? What is Mazaluna? Um no one cares what I don't, I don't know exactly how to explain it. Uh we got the raw bar. Uh we should not come Isn't down there. The we, should not come, we should not just come down there just to go to the shop house. How, how, how much are the appetizers? Do they even have appetizers? They, they have appetizers, yeah. But it's... Oh, yeah, here it is. Where are my appetizers? Let me see. 
Cold water oysters. Okay. All right. That's that's what that's how we're starting off. See, you know, there we go. Lollipop lamb chops. There we go. That's what they're called. But if you get them in an entree, they're called Australian lamb chops. Rib. <laughs> Seared beef tenderloin tips. You're not even getting the whole tenderloin. You're just getting the tip of it. Yeah. Crab and lobster cake. Oh, okay. It's it's okay. What's what's the what's the dessert looking like? Chocolate peanut butter butter. That's tart. okay. That's the one thing I will say about the chop house that if I do go because I have actually had the desserts at least because we were downtown. Hmm. I had the chocolate peanut butter tart. That's really good because you get a little bit of gelato with it. Hmm. Um. What about the uh, and then I. Yeah, see, well, I forgot who had what, but I remember one person had the espresso creme brulee. And or versus the next one, she would have said cre- cream brulee. <laughs> if, who would have said it? If the person next to us at the restaurant that I went to for my oh, birthday, yeah. she would have said cream brulee. <laughs> Where no, would have no, went back Cream brulee. Cream brulee. Bruce Lee. <laughs> <sighs> it's like, where's Bruce Lee? Carrot cake, Shrey Hmm. Try that you? Hmm. Oh, that actually would be. Oh, okay. I'm not a fan of carrot cake, the... though. You take off the walnuts, though. Oh yeah, yeah, those walnuts. And those I walnuts would, and stuff. I would try that. Hmm. Because the cream cheese and the caramel sauce and the strawberry sounds like a good mix. You start putting the walnuts in it though, and it's you start getting too many things. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. But uh, yeah, I'll probably try the chocolate peanut butter tart when I go. If no, I what's funny though, what's funny about the Chop House though is it's they don't have sides, they have accompaniments. What do you mean by that? So, okay, so you know how when you get a burger, you get a side of fries, right? Yeah, when you go like to a, a restaurant. Yeah, that's like a regular restaurant. I like a steakhouse. Okay. It's like all, all a cart, right? No, no, no. Yeah, so it's like all a la carte, but they don't say you don't want you don't say that you want a side or you don't want a baked potato on the side. You would say you want it. You want a baked potato, or no, you want the steak to be accompanied yeah. with a baked potato. Yeah, it's like this isn't um, this isn't like an orchestra. This isn't going to the opera house. Yes, it is. When you go to when you go to steakhouse like oh, like the ch- the chop house. Yeah, no, you have to wear it's like you have you should better come in a suit or something. That's the real deal. Right. But like usually when I go to Ruth Chris, I usually just wear a button up and jeans. Nice shoes. That's pretty yeah, you couldn't do that here. You would want to wear you don't have to do a tie necessarily, but you should at least wear a dress shirt. Yeah, uh, button up. I usually wear a button up in, in black jeans with brown shoes. I wouldn't do that here. I would wear just like I guess what I would wear is I would wear my blue dress, like my blue suit pants. Suit pants, white shirt. We're eating yeah. steak. We're eating steak. We're not sleeping with the steak. <laughs> it's not a, it's not no, a special you're... occasion. It's not a rehearsal dinner. But you, you have to look like you belong. Though. That's the... Oh, I look like I belong. I'm paying the bill. <laughs> I look like I belong. <laughs> the last time I paid for the bill, oh boy. You, you know who is uh, calling, so hold on yeah, one yeah, moment. I know. So uh, while, we, while we get into that, we're going to go to my top 10 list of the week, which is my top 10 Beehive songs. Yes, I'm talking about Beyonce, the one and only Beyonce. Now we have a lot of honorable mentions this week. We have five. So we have Drunken Love. We have Freedom, Diva, Lemonade, and Countdown. Those are my five honorable mentions from the one, the only, Beyonce. Now, my top 10 Beyonce songs are number 10, If I Were a Boy. Number nine, XO. Number eight, Irreplaceable. Number seven, Pretty Hurts. Number six, Best Thing I Never Had. Number five, All Night. Number four, Halo. Number three, Love on Top. 
Number two, single ladies put a ring on it. And number one of my top 10 Beyonce songs, Crazy in Love. Now, before people go off on me, I did not include Destiny's Child songs or Destiny's Child songs. I would have said duets, but I kind of put in. Except for there was like at one point four girls, including her. I'm true, yeah. It was four. Then in the beginning, then it went down to three. Who was the fourth one? It were, were, actually, that was, was anyone actually, actually there was a mix of five, but they were wait, there was, wait, 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 there was five? No, there was four in the group, four, but the fourth one was always off and on. So there's like five, five group, group members. One of them was Latoya Luckett, which she was out. So then what came down to Beyonce, Kelly, Kelly Rowland, and Michelle Williams. That, those, those are the three we know. Yeah, those are the three that we always remember. And yeah, then but, I remember yeah, but, at the beginning there was a fourth one. Yeah, the fourth one was Latoya Luckett. But she's so on you're a, saying a whole there... bunch of shows. There was a fifth one, but she was like on and off. When when they had when they started off with four, but when they went famous, they were they only had three, which was Michelle Williams, Kelly Rowland, and Beyonce Knowles. Okay, but yeah, what what's your favorite Beyonce song, Basil? Everybody has a favorite. I mean, I want to say "Crazy in Love," but I feel like that. I feel like that does count as a duet, technically. It was, but it was on her, um, it was on her first album. It was. What's the one that um that she did for Pink Panther? Was it Bonnie and Clyde? No. It hold on. Let me see. I don't I don't remember. I'm I'm not a huge fan of Beyonce, but um I mean I'm not either. You said Pink Panther? She did something for yeah, people. it was. No, remember how she was in the first Pink Panther movie? Yeah, and uh, I think it was two thousand six. Ish with uh, with Steve Martin. Yeah, but there was a song that she check on it. That's what it was. Check, yeah, it was check on it. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good song. But uh, yeah, those are my top ten Beyonce songs. So we had a number ten, if I was with our boy, number nine, EXO, number eight, Irreplaceable, number seven, Pretty Hurts, number six, Best Thing I Never Had, number five, All Night, number four, Halo, number three, Love on Top, number two, Single Ladies Put a Ring on It, and number one, Crazy in Love. And that has been another episode of the Crisscross Corner. Please subscribe to the podcast on Apple. Spotify and Anchor. Go to anchor.com, actually anchor.fm slash crisscross corner slash support. Five dollars a month to sustain future episodes. Go to the Patreon Crisscross Corner 313 to watch all of the Crisscross Studios content, including this podcast and the great debaters and other shows that we do. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Basil Lowe, for being on the show. And Everybody stay safe, social distance, and be nice to each other.